So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Tory voters losing faith in Brexit, a poll find. So this is this is really good news because at the end of the day, the Tory party has to appeal to the Tory base. So the more the more Tories that lose faith in Brexit, the more chance we have of actually getting close alignment with the EU and getting away from this kind of not uh, this right wing populist kind of ideology, at least hopefully. So conservative voters are losing faith in Brexit, with many now believing the costs outweigh the benefits. A new poll has shown scepticism amongst Tory supporters towards Britain's departure from the EU is now greater than support for how it is going. As senior backbenchers urge the government to do more to deliver on the opportunities of leaving the bloc. So there's even an article in the Telegraph blaming the Tories for the lack of Brexit support as they claim the Tories botched Brexit when this is what people voted for. Right. You know, harsh trade borders, controlling immigration, despite the fact that we need immigration to help build the economy and social services, controlling our own laws by axing up to 4000 without actual scrutiny or parliamentary without actual scrutiny or any kind of judgment from anyone. That part has not happened yet, but it will be fun when it does. Um, but this is not what the people of this island wanted because Brexiteers kept saying this isn't what they wanted. But what is, you know, what is what they wanted? Because the only answer I've seen are mythical ones are like, you know, the technological solutions that don't exist. And so Brexiteers are always quick to say what they voted against, but never quick to say what they voted for. The findings of a new poll by Opinion, which surveyed 2,000 representative voters on the behalf of the campaigning group Best for Britain, uh, found that some 33% of those planning to vote Conservative at the next election believe Brexit had created more problems than it solved. So you have a third of people still planning to vote Tory, saying that this that Brexit has created more problems, and they're going to vote for the party that gave us these problems. What's wrong with people? This is compared to the 22% who said it had solved more problems, while uh, one third, 32%, said leaving the EU had neither created nor solved more problems or opportunities, and the remaining 13% saying they didn't know. So unless the problem it solved for them is less EU immigration, I don't understand what problems has um, has Brexit solved for them. Like, I wish they were asked more open-ended questions or given selection options. The main concern of the Tory voters currently disillusioned with Brexit was problems around the Northern Ireland border, cited by 39% of respondents. See, that's surprising that Northern Ireland was mentioned because it's in the news once in a while um, as a Brexit issue. Uh, because Stormont is closed, that's the main reason, or because someone's kicked up a fuss about the protocol. Maybe this is because people have read that Stormont has been closed. I don't know why Northern Ireland would be on the radar for most Tory voters, it's odd. I know they're called the Conservative and Unionist Party, but even still. This was followed by anxiety around red tape affecting trade with other countries, 36% of people said, and it being more difficult to work abroad without freedom of movement, 33% of people said. So trade and no freedom of movement are the interesting ones. I wonder if the people polled are noticing the price increases or maybe work in businesses that are feeling the Brexit pinch. No freedom of movement screams of people trapped in EU points of entry for ages, but they did cite um, work being more difficult, so it's quite interesting. Um, at least that's the way I've read it. You know, these three are interesting ones. Most Tory voters, I think, would have gone for the Channel Crossing. So this is bizarre in my opinion. Two of the Brexit Spartan Tories who voted against Theresa May's deal, which was infinitely better than what we have now, on all three occasions said their party had yet to do enough to convince the public of the merits of leaving Brussels. Sir John Redwood, the titan of intellectuality, the MP for Wokingham, ironic, who served at the head of Margaret Thatcher's Downing Street policy unit, told The Telegraph it was, quote, deeply disappointing that the obvious Brexit wins haven't been achieved. It's entirely what you'd expect because the government has wanted to bring forward the Brexit wins, but has been systematically blocked and upended by the anti-Brexit establishment, he said, end quote. So where are these so-called wins? He, as most Brexiteers, did not mention what they are. Seems the new Brexit mantra is to blame civil servants and the Lords. The civil service, to my knowledge, has not really hampered Brexit. We have not read much about it, except when they see something as unlawful like the DUP's actions with the protocol and parts where they complain that certain policies are illegal from the Home Office. Um, but not much outside of that. But of course, if these wins are so easy, how come the, quote, blob keeps stopping them? The Tories have a 70-plus seat majority. Pushing legislation for them should be child's play as long as it's in their manifesto. So bizarre. Quote, we don't have control uh, of our borders 
or control um, or control the small boats in the way that was intended. We have remained wedded to an austerity model of economics based on the Maastricht criteria, and we are letting voters down. And we need to show that they were right to vote for Brexit. End quote. So that's from John Redwood, I think again. So small channel crossings have gone up since Brexit because we can't send the asylum seekers back to France or the safe country they came from. Would the austerity stuff like the Maastricht Treaty was credited by then Finance Minister Yanis uh, Varoufakis? Um, the austerity model is the dominant model in Western ideology or Western economics. The IMF also imposed austerity and privatisation on Greece. David Cameron used austerity to shrink the state. Um, I don't know if he was an actual true believer in the theory of austerity, but we know that Sunak and Hunt believe in it. Um, David Cameron used you know, austerity to shrink the state. I don't know if he, he genuinely thought it's a good idea. Um, to blame the current round of austerity on the EU models makes no sense. They did not impose austerity on us. It was our choice, just like it was in 2010, um, because we clearly do not understand economics. So to blame Maastricht makes no sense when, you know, we've left the EU. We don't have to do austerity. We never had to do austerity. Um, so it's just ludicrous. One Eurosceptic Tory backbencher said they were very sorry that Mog no longer held the post of Brexit Opportunities Minister and said their colleague... Uh, their colleagues still feel like we're fighting battles against the government over the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill and tackle, tackling bureaucracy. And, you know, this one brave Brexiteer did not give their name. Perhaps um, their Brexit ideas suck. Like, we have seen what happened when they announced these glorious plans under Liz Trust, which cost us around £30 billion, depending on where you, where you read that figure. Some put it at much higher. You're getting the huge Brexit deregulation bill. Like, what more do you want? Like, please be specific. The Northern Ireland Protocol Bill has been shelved. Um, but, you know, the idea that Brexit got rid of red tape is not true. It's added more red tape to our imports and exports. Um, Labour and the Tories, even the Lib Dems, oh, sorry, Tobias Elwood said, no one is calling, quote, no one is calling for another referendum. But as this poll confirms, more of the electorate is saying that this isn't the Brexit they voted for, yet it still remains such a taboo subject in Westminster and specifically within our membership, the Tory membership that we do not dare open this uh, Pandora's box, end quote. So Labour and the Tories, even the Lib Dems, um, are running scared of Brexit. Clearly voters' opinions, um, despite the efforts of the print media and the politicians, are seeing that their lives are getting worse. It should really be the tabloids, not the print media. Elwood got hammered when he mentioned we should rejoin the single market, even though it's impossible anyways. But overall, this poll hints at Tory voters being annoyed at Brexit, but not for the small boat crossings, which I would have assumed to be the case. Um, they're more annoyed at you know freedom of movement impacting their ability to work abroad, um, the impact on trade and the impact on Northern Ireland. But despite most politicians, except the SNP and the Greens, public opinion is shifting. Um, you know, most parties are, you know, avoiding Brexit as best they can. Um, it's sad that Labour can't see that if only mortgage man... Um, it's sad that Labour can't see this, um, but only if mortgage man changes his mind, maybe then Labour would as well. But I, I, I don't know if they would even at that point. But yeah, it's clear the focus groups are not giving us the answers that we need and the logical answers they're giving, you know stupid answers but anyways i'm gonna leave it there let me know what you think in the comments below like comment share subscribe support the channel on patreon if you can and hopefully i'll see you in the next one